As the Clone Wars raged on, Jedi Generals Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi were deployed deep into the Outer Rim, where they were tasked with overseeing combat operations. Just as the two were about to regroup with their fleet, ready to return to Coruscant, Anakin received a very faint distress signal from a nearby young Jedi, desperately begging for help. So, I'm going to break down how Anakin Skywalker saved this young lady from certain death, and why it took a horribly tragic turn not too long after. And Padme is not going to be too happy about hearing this story. Before we get into it, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more awesome Star Wars lore content. So, the story begins deep in the Outer Rim, where Obi-Wan and Anakin are about to complete their mission and regroup with the other Republic forces immediately, because they are very rapidly running low on supplies and armaments. As Obi-Wan urges Anakin to get moving, he stops his master and tells him that he is receiving a very weak communication signal. Anakin then asks R2-D2 to lock onto the frequency to see its location. Anakin's loyal droid successfully locks onto the faint signal, allowing Anakin to tap in and hear the words, Priority 1 emergency call, Jedi Knight Keto, I need immediate evac. Obi-Wan then demands to know what Anakin heard through his comms device, and Anakin tells him that it was a Priority 1 distress call, before telling his master that he will have to lead the fleet on his own. Obi-Wan is not exactly happy with this because the council is expecting them both to regroup immediately, but reluctantly gives Anakin permission to investigate the worrying distress call. Following this, Anakin zooms towards the station, known as the Brink of the Celestial Wake, before landing his ship safely in a nearby bay and tasking R2 to keep whatever might be lurking inside away from the ship. A horrible sense of dread washes over Anakin as he continues moving forward and countless bodies of the brave fallen clone troopers surround him. As small fires burn and broken glass litters the area, Anakin carefully traverses through the rubble until he comes across a sight that shocks and angers him to the core. He sees that a fellow Jedi Knight has been savagely killed by whatever creatures are inside the station and his lightsaber lies beside him, showing that he put up a fight right to the end. Anakin notices that this brave Jedi Master fought alongside his men until the very last moment and until he was completely overwhelmed. Anakin then pauses in memory of this fallen Jedi, but is quickly jolted out of it by a loud swoop sound before he sees the lightsaber on the ground zoom away from him. In shock, Anakin ignites his blue lightsaber without a second thought before quickly noticing the shimmer of two emerald green blades. As Anakin turns around, he sees a fellow young Jedi Knight wielding the two green blades. The young Jedi is slightly annoyed at Anakin for taking so long, and he very quickly introduces himself by saying, I'm Anakin Skywalker, I'm here to rescue you. A <laughs> very nice reference to his future son Luke's line from A New Hope, where Luke is rescuing Leia, also Anakin's daughter, so a very cool family reference. The young Jedi is not impressed with Anakin, telling him to spare the heroics before introducing herself as Sarah Keto. Sarah urges Anakin to get moving while pointing her green blade at him, but Anakin grins, telling her that he's not the kind of Jedi who runs from a fight, and that she can wait here while he does the dirty work. Sarah sarcastically responds, telling him that she's not going anywhere, leading him to storm off. Soon after, Anakin rushes forward, finally discovering the creatures which have been causing so much harm and destruction aboard the station. When he sees the tiny pink blob creatures, Anakin gains an incredible amount of confidence, before gliding forward and slashing each of the clawed pink blobs in half. He then confidently turns to Sarah, saying, See? No problem. Before sprinting forward, ready to take on the next wave of slimy pink blob creatures. As he does this, Sarah shouts out to Anakin, warning him to stop because she knows the horrible reality of exactly how these creatures work. Anakin is then stopped in his tracks, stunned at the creatures, as he sees them joining together to form a structure. As the structure begins to come together and the pink blobs continue to pile up, he quickly realises that he is now facing a spider droid completely made from the pink blob creatures. This worries Anakin deeply as the spider droid manages to tear his cloak, causing him to shut. I could use some help here. Sarah of course berates Anakin because he didn't listen to her concerns earlier, but the two stand firm, deflecting a flurry of red blaster bolts from the ridiculous droid. As the two continue blocking and deflecting the scorching blaster bolts, Anakin asks, do these things have any weaknesses? In response to this, Sarah says, if I knew that, I wouldn't have sent that distress call now, would I? Eventually, a second spider droid is formed from the pink blob creatures, and the two young Jedi are having a lot of trouble repelling their rapid advances. Moments later, Sarah sarcastically asks Anakin, what now, hero? But before she can go any further, the looming arm of the droid grabs her by the waist and forcefully pulls her towards him. Luckily, however, Anakin quickly comes to the rescue, freeing her from the droid's harsh grip and leaving her to plummet to the ground. Following this, Anakin summons all of his might 
all of his power in the force and all of his strength, targeting it at the two spider droids to violently slam them into each other with a monumental crash. After that, Anakin gracefully throws his blue lightsaber towards the central column of the room, before again summoning his strength in the force to lift the heavy column and direct it straight into the nearby wall. Anakin then pats himself on the back for his valiant effort in saving Sarah, but only moments after he does this, the air inside of the station begins to be rapidly sucked out into the vacuum of space, leading her to snap back with, you were saying? As Sarah is only moments away from being flung out into the deep, cold void of space, Anakin grabs her and carries her inside of an airlock, where he is quickly able to take them out of harm's way. After this, Anakin sees a flashing red button on a control panel nearby, which he believes will activate the ship's emergency ray shields, which should seal the breach on the outer walls. As he's about to press in the flashing button, however, Sarah shouts out to him, warning him not to touch it. Anakin protests, saying, but this place is falling apart. But surprisingly, he does listen, realizing that the only way to keep these creatures from spreading is to let the station destroy itself. Knowing this, Anakin grabs Sarah by the arm and pulls her to his ship, where he warns R2 to immediately prepare for takeoff. His droid buzzes in a rush, and Sarah looks over, frustratingly asking, you brought a one-person ship on a rescue mission? Anakin grins and says, you can wait for a bigger ship to come along if you'd like. Sarah is left blank-faced, saying, I can't believe this. Despite her not being the happiest about the situation, Anakin gets her into his cockpit and seats her on his lap as they zoom away from the soon-to-be-destroyed station. As the two are riding along, Anakin has a smile on his face for the whole journey, before Sarah says, if you weren't a Jedi, I'd think you planned this. And in the typical Anakin spirit, he responds to this by saying, if I weren't a Jedi, we'd both be going down with that ship. And to end the story, Anakin continues to joke around, saying, I've heard there are some spectacular crystalline asteroids nearby, maybe we could go take a look. Sarah softly smiles at him with a mixture of frustration and fun, telling Anakin, just take me home, flyboy. I've had enough excitement for one day. Obviously another reference to A New Hope there. Padme certainly won't be happy when she hears about this little war story, that's for sure. Sometime after this mission is where the tragic turn comes. Unfortunately, during Operation Nightfall, Anakin faced Sarah Kero inside of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant before savagely defeating her in a duel and throwing her over the railings of the top level to a large, painful fall before brutally crushing her to death with a nearby stone pillar. Sarah was the top student of Sindralig, the battle master of the Jedi Order, and her death left him shocked and saddened, causing him to rush over to confront Anakin. Unfortunately for him, Anakin, or Darth Vader as he now was, also got the better of Sindralig and slaughtered him. Those of you who have played the Revenge of the Sith PS2 game will certainly know this story very well, so let me know down below if you've played the game. But that is the story of when Anakin Skywalker saved Sarah Keto from certain death during the Clone Wars, before their fateful battle in the Jedi Temple during Operation Nightfall. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.